Welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Last time, we rescued what's left of Tetra from the depths of the ghost ship after taking on the Cuba sisters. And uh, I have a score to settle with a certain man. I should have known he wouldn't have even cared. All right, Link. We've got to get out of here. This is no time to sit around with your mouth hanging hanging open. I never even talk. The old man said that Zhao's the blacksmith holds the clue we're looking for. We have to find that blacksmith and defeat Bellum. And then, and then the treasure will be in my hands. <laughs> What's with you? Hey, do we really need to take this guy with us, Link? Him. Anyway, uh, let's get going. Zaus lives on the island to the north of the Isle of Gust, right? Should be a short trip from here. Yep, let's stop wasting time. Let's go, ship out. Gee, it sure is a good thing Cielo was here to repeat things, cause you know, that's really a helpful ability that we needed this time, or what we needed this time. Ooh, the mast ship is out of the map. I'm tempted to go there. Oh, Jolene is on the world map right away, yes. She pops up at random. A lot of the time after story events, she'll be on the open waters, and at times she'll just kind of pop up on her own. And if she notices you, there's not very much that can be done unless just happen to be close to a dock, I suppose. I think actually, since she's right there, I'll encounter her on purpose. Why the rush line, Beck? I'll break your ship in two no matter where you run on this vast sea. Stay put. Uh, just don't chip any stone off of the statue, and we won't have no problems. Linebeck, show yourself. Ah, you again. Little boy in green. Any chance you might tell me where Linebeck is? Hmm, I didn't think so. Well, I suppose that means I'll have to deal with you two in, in, in deal of the two of you in order. And I will start with you. Prepare for punishment. I thought that's kind of what you meant by order, but all right, if you feel the need to actually specify it, it's like, I'll take it by force, the hard way. <laughs> Rub! I'ma rub you, Jolene! Oh. <laughs> she shoved me across the room! <laughs> Link just went for a ride and he's like, Oh, I have things to say about this! Ah, remember this day and remember it well. Hear me! Phew, say we will about that girl. She knows how to imitate a pirate. Lineback, professional crate inspector. Kind of catchy, don't you think? Here's a tip for giving that crazy girl the heave-ho for me, Link. I wanted to show this because the reward has gotten bigger, a red rupee, and they might get bigger still if Jolene keeps getting him in trouble. Hey, we're shipping out, Link. Let's put these waters behind us. Keeping Lineback on his toes does have its rewards. <sighs> what a beautiful island. Bears repeating just how cool it looks. Ah, some mail. It's yours, Link, but there's no return address. Who's it from? Guess we don't know, but ahem, here's what it says. Link, Link! I heard that you rescued Tetra from the ghost ship. Congratulations! Well done! Haha! <laughs> Amazing, really! Say, did you leave something important on the ship? Maybe a heart container? We grabbed it for you, so please take it. We're closely watching your epic adventure, oh scatterbrained one. From very high in the sky. So it says, something's attached, want it? You're still free to say no, but I'm taking it. The development team themselves write you a letter saying that they noticed you leave the heart container behind on a dungeon you can never revisit and did this. That is brilliant, that's hilarious. This is such a good secret, and I never see it talked about. Whenever I tell people, they're like, oh my god, they did that? Yeah. Don't know who this letter's from, but good for you. Okay, see you around the sea, sir. <laughs> you just don't appreciate good attention to detail in video games. Then again, he probably doesn't know he's in one, so um, I guess I'm caught with my pants down. That's just such a cool detail. I had to not grab that heart container because I wanted to show that so badly. <laughs> 
Link, I knew you'd be visiting soon. Zows, so you know Grandpa. How do you know him? You see, for generations, our ancestors lived to serve the Ocean King. They defended the Ocean King in an age when great evil lurked in the sea. My people forged our own weapons and fought in epic battles. You seek one of those great weapons, an artifact called the Phantom Sword. So we need that sword to defeat Bellum, like Grandpa told us? That's right. Bellum has the power to drink the life force from you. Only the Phantom Sword can slay him. Now you must find the Phantom Sword and defeat him, Link. Okay, let's get Bellum, Link! So, Zows, uh, will you let us borrow that Phantom Sword? I no longer have it. What? You don't? No, I do not. You've got to be kidding! Why tell us we should defeat Bellum when it's pretty much impossible? Don't jump to conclusions. I am Zows, the blacksmith. I may not have one now, but I can make one. Oh, you can? Okay, then. Well, what are you waiting for? Make one. <laughs> I can't. You can't? What do you mean you can't make one for us? Are you joking? The Phantom Sword is no ordinary sword. When forged, normal metal can never handle that kind of sacred power. Aquanine, Azurine, and Crimsonine. These three pure metals must be forged together to create the Phantom Sword. Come on, Link. Let's go find those three pure metals. So, where can we find these three metals? You can't? Long ago, the Ocean King gifted the pure metals to three tribes in this world. The three tribes must have passed these treasures down over generations. Visit those tribes, and they should be able to tell you the location of the metals. Three tribes, but... Where are we supposed to go? We've traveled a lot, but we've never met someone who'd have that have a pure metal. You must go in search of sea charts. You will need more sea charts in addition to the ones you already have. Enter the temple of the Ocean King and get the next sea chart. But we already got the bot to the bottom of the temple of the Ocean King. There weren't any other paths we could have taken. There was a door that you could open by drawing a symbol, was there not? If you draw this symbol on that door, Another way should open to you. Wow! Who knew that door had such an amazing secret? Make note of the symbol, and let's go to the temple, Link. Good luck out there, Link. In case there is some curiousness to this, it is not possible to go through that door and uncover the secret if the symbol is just already known. Simply, nothing will happen, and only the shape of the Phantom Hourglass will open the way forward. It doesn't really look like a Triforce when I drew it up there. It sort of looks like a... You know what? I'm going to draw like a... Um, here, let's draw an opening, and then like a smile. So it, that's a great smile. You know what I mean? It looks like a mother holding onto her baby with those two arms while she's wearing some kind of nun robe. I was trying to go for that, but... Uh, didn't really do that. Uh, we need a sword. Pure metal? Hey now, why is that every time that we... Fine, I'll follow you to the end, but only because of how desperate you are. And then you'll beat that Bellum. Got it, Link? We'll show him who's boss, buddy. We have some other errands that could be taken care of. For one, Bannon Island. There's the letter from Jolene that we got quite a while ago and still have not delivered, so this is the first convenient time to really do that where there's not a lot of sense of urgency. More mail! <laughs> the choo choo just like looking so awkward up there with sta standing up straight. It's like he has a really erect spinal column and doesn't want to show it. <laughs> From Linebeck to Link. Okay, this is weird. Why am I writing to you when we're together all the time? But just give me a moment to remember why I was writing you. Oh, so I'm writing because I'm grateful, alright? Happy now? Thanks, okay? There, I've said it. Well, this is awkward. What's next? Uh, how about, thanks for working like a dog for me, you treasure dog. See? That's something you, I, you just can't say to a guy's face, you know? One more thing. A gift to show my thanks. Give it to yourself, or else. How convenient that his gift to me was a part for his boat. <laughs> it's like when people buy you presents because it's a shared item that the whole family is going to use, but in this case, it's just going to be a part of his own property. I don't... 
think we have enough demon parts even with that to get any kind of bonus, but I'll check it out next time we're in town. I look like I kind of clipped through that a little bit. Hey, what have you got there? Come on, you can show me. Read it at your own risk. Oh, it's a letter from Jolene, my big sister. Aw, you came here just to deliver that to, to deliver it to me. Thank you so much. I have to tear into it and read it right now. I love letters. Tee? <laughs> oh, Jolene, she never changes. She's still in a dressing up as a pirate. I'm glad she's happy with her hobby. But enough about my sister and her obsession with pirate costumes. I should give you something for delivering this to me. Here you go. A wisdom gem! It's okay, really. I don't need it. Go on, it's yours. Ah, Jolene. I wonder if she's caught that wily man yet. <laughs> if she doesn't take him by sword point, she might lose her shot. And she was hitting on him earlier, unaware. Ooh, saucy family secrets. I have not hauled in anything new, unfortunately. Oh, fine, I'll show you what I've hauled in if you're really that indignant about it. Jolene and Joanne exist in somewhat of an enigma to me, and I'm hoping that maybe you can shed some light on this, just like you did with the, um, with the uh, postman. Jolene and Joanne are just stated to be standard, normal old human characters in any sort of official text, but I've always kind of wondered if maybe they're Gerudo. They have the eyes, they have the eye markings and the skin color going on, and there's also the fact that Gerudo, though only one time, have been portrayed as pirates. I'm thinking that Jolene might be a Gerudo who wishes to be a pirate, and that's kind of where the connection is there, because she really looks the part. And I feel like with her looking the part and being a pirate, it, it can't be a coincidence. It's a little bit specific. That's my personal theory about it, but again, there is no hard evidence to support this. Hello! Hi! You know what? Stop! No, I'm not. You are coming with me. You are coming with me. I don't care if I'm taking a little bit of damage. This is a big pirate ship. Distinct, uh, it's distinguished by the sail that is on top of it. Whenever you come near one of these, right when it goes down, salvage. They were pirates. They had treasure, which is now sunken treasure for us to pluck the plunder. This is only for the big pirate ships, which could not appear until after finishing up at the ghost ship. Keep an eye out them from the high seas. It's yet another way that sailing is made a hell of a lot more engaging. Ancient cannon, our first duplicate ship part, but at least one that I said looked cool before. There will be a random ship part every single time this is done and is a very reliable way to get lots and lots of ship parts. I only took one heart of damage in that battle as well, so doubly good. On to Beetle. Or, sorry, uh, on to the masked ship. There's a courage gem there and I want to take a look at my collection. We're not within range of being able to get anything new. He does have two ship parts for sale. I didn't lie, I closed and redid the interior, and the shop is reborn! <laughs> just like I said, not gonna miss that in any main click. Is this just the hippest and hottest fad right now? <laughs> Don't tell me the other one's gonna be an ancient cannon. Okay, good, Ooh, mermaid prow. Oh, that's pretty. I, I kinda want one. I'm buying it for no other reason than just to keep my options open and trying to make the ship look really cool next time I go to customize it because we have quite a lot of ship parts and I think it'll look great alongside some of the stuff we've already picked up. Sometimes it's all the reason that's needed to spend money. I'm thinking a trip back to Merke is in order. The Neptuna! The Neptuna! Come back here! He's coming right towards me! He knows me! Senpai! I am so sorry for that. That was really bad. <laughs> really cringy there. Okay, I have learned my lesson. Hold down when pulling. I haven't been holding down long enough and I've been doing it repeatedly. It's a rusty swordfish. That explains why I was having an easy time getting into the green. It's mine! This is a big one. Unfortunately, no little in to match. I took a slight detour, totally not to see if I could make the Neptuna spawn. Rather, I wanted to see if Astrid had anything new to say. 
And it's at this time I'd like to start talking about the Phantom Hourglass manga. One does exist, it's only a volume, not long at all if you want to give it a read. It's a pretty good interpretation of the story and gets the characters very well. And Asterid has a drastic redesign and is a bit more fleshed out in the original one. And I ain't just talking about her redesign either. She's a likable character, she doesn't bother anybody. So I'm happy to see her getting more attention in the extended universe stuff. In order to restore Tetra, you must destor destroy the very source of the darkness. Turn to the Temple of the Ocean King on Murkay Isle, on Murkay, and find another sea chart. Astrid, I mean this in the best way possible. You remind me of that character on Steven Universe who sees the future one second too late and says it after it just happened. Jolene has spawned in, and so is the Neptune. Oh no, 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 no! She's gonna despawn it if I go. Oh no, crap! This is bad. Uh, please go another way. Something. She's going over this way. I'm gonna run into her if she keeps going down though. Maybe she'll go through the... I'm just gonna... I'm gonna anchor right here. Sometimes stopping is a valid tactic just to see how everything is gonna move about the map. I know that the Neptuna, when it's in there, will come out here, and it seems like she's going in as well. Good, good. It looks like it's coming out here, she's going in there. It's just gonna leap into my arms, isn't it? It's gonna be such a lovely reunion, and I'm gonna be all slimy and smell like fish for the rest of the day, but it's gonna be so worth it in the end. Oh. I'm gonna go straight up right here, because just wanna kinda leave my movement options open for wherever it goes. I don't remember if it goes directly down right away, but maybe it does. I think maybe it loops around, actually, because I headed it off down at the bottom, so that would make sense. So I am on track to go find it right now. Fish menu, fish menu, fish menu, fish menu, fish is on the menu, fish is on the menu, fish is on the menu. I don't care. Go away. You're technically a fish. You're a flying fish, but I really don't care. Okay. Uh, not what I meant to do. Uh, uh, no. Root, 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 root. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Down. Arr, she blows. We're heading her off at the pass. For all that I've worked, this better not be another stupid rusty swordfish. Thank God. I was waiting for that to appear and I was worried it wasn't. So hold down when pulling, do it in longer strokes, holding it down at the bottom of the screen and move it while still touching. This looks like it's it because that was giving me the tutorial and it was doing it right away. Yeah, this is a lot heavier than what was before. If I keep this up, we'll win for sure. Yes. Feel it. We're halfway there. This is going a lot smoother than last time. I actually just thought that was how you were supposed to do it because I thought like pulling you wanted to do it repeatedly to not put too much strain on it. And because I was able to easily catch every fish but this one by doing that method, I just sort of thought that this one was just really hard, which made sense to me. I feel like this is a legendary Pokemon boss fight. Eight, seven, same concept, ba same basic concept. Six. This thing is huge. I'm just trying to pull it in with this little thing. Five, four. Three. Two. Not gonna chance it. One. I thought I had an X for an I for a second. I was like, what'd you kill it? <laughs> 17 feet, three inches. Fishmen swap tails of this mythical fish. Take it to the adventurer. As much as I'd like to go fight Jolene and get stuff out of her, she can damage the ship pretty badly. I've had times where my jumping over her missiles was just slightly off in timing and I couldn't do it. Ah, young man, show me what you hauled in. Where is it? <laughs> Let's see it. This, this is a legendary fish, Neptuna! This is the first time I have gazed into this mighty eyes. For you to have caught the living embodiment of romance in the sea, young man, you must have the most adventurous heart for truly seizing the way a spirit of wayfaring adventure. A gift. 
Full heart container. That's 11 hearts now. A mutual passion for the wayfare in life bonds us as brothers. Bravo, young man. You have followed your heart. You are truly the legendary romantic. Mm, tell that to Tetra when she wakes up, buddy. Mm, she'd love to hear that one. Wow. This was quite a banner day. We could have had one more heart container than we have had for quite a while. I thought this would be just the more fun way to do it, and I stand by my logic now that we have gotten it. I have no regrets about it. Unless Jolene's out in that sea, I think that's going to be it, though. For a second there, I thought the masked ship was there. <laughs> Amendment time! I'm not done with you yet. Over in the southwestern sea, the traveler ship that's over by Molita Island is a place of interest. Once per day of real time, the mini blends respawn, as does a Geozard. Such a cool sounding name, just Geozard. Geozard, use Earth Flower. Earth Flower? <laughs> I was trying to combine Earthquake and Flamethrower because of the Charizard thing that I said last time, and I completely botched it up. It was completely inept. After saving him from a more abnormous disaster, that's 20 rupees, just as it is for defeating any room full of mini blends. And right after you rob him blind to get a few more precious rupees. Ow. Oh no, oh golly, I must have overslept. Oh yeah, I've been feeling pretty generous. I've been picking up things for you. Here, I got this, you know, this nice piece of flotsam. More to come, be ready. Dark Pearl Loop, not worth a lot, but there is a random treasure given by this once per day of real time, and if you have been making a video series where you only record a few segments of the game per day, you're gonna be playing this for well over a month, and it'll be well worth it to stop by. Just leaving that for the future generations that might be doing the same thing that I'm doing. He gave me another Dark Pearl Loop. And, oh. A third Dark Pearl Loop! And, a fourth. Okay, good, one that was actually worth a lot. Oh, I don't have any more, but I imagine that's enough to make you happy, right? <laughs> there isn't a personal, I wasn't happy to get a present. I was gonna come and check on him later because I thought this was based on story progress and not real time, but it's just yet another thing that you've taught me. That means it is time to go back to Murkay Isle, the only place that I think has anything that we can do with the bow that we have not already done, as well as our visit to the temple, the Ocean King. And you know what that means. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, it's time to go down there once more with a lot more ground to retread. See you guys then. Thank you.